So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, I have seen a ton of people doing Ironmans lately and I definitely feel like I could do one. I feel pretty in shape or pretty fit. And even if you aren't yet, you definitely can get there. A lot of people, I believe, have the ability to do an Ironman if they're willing to obviously put in the work and stay consistent with it. Uh, but that goes for anything in life, right? So if you are thinking about doing an Ironman, here are 10 things that I wish I knew about before jumping into it. And also, if you're new to the channel, I just recently did my first first full Ironman back this past July. I did Ironman Lake Placid. And here is actually like my little frame thing. This is the, the metal. It has my time and everything on it. My overall time was 14 hours, 21 minutes. It was a really tough course. If any of you guys have done Ironman Lake Placid, uh, you know how tough that course was. But it was one of the greatest days of my life. And I definitely highly recommend anyone at least trying to give it a shot to do an Ironman because like I mentioned, it could be a true life changer. So let's just start off with number one. And that is just understanding the time commitment behind it. You know, training for an Ironman can literally take over your life. Before doing my first full Ironman, I had done two half Ironmans. And those were definitely a lot more manageable when it comes to the time that was really needed to train for them. However, training for the full Ironman was just a completely different beast. You know, you could hit up to 15 to 20 hour training weeks, which could be really tough to balance with work and life and your family, whatever else you got going on. So it's really crucial to learn time management and know how to plan ahead. But you really have to learn how to prioritize friends and family and most important rest. But the friends and family part is huge because as you get into the Ironman training journey, you'll realize that you're gonna be exhausted a lot. Therefore, it's hard to always go out and do stuff with friends and family. And you just need to be prepared for that so that it doesn't shock you when it finally hits and, and makes you want to kind of give up on training. The second thing to really kind of keep in mind is that it can really be a lot more mental than it is physical at times. You know, obviously the physical preparation is absolutely crucial here. However, the Ironman is a huge mental game as well. You know, there will be many moments throughout training and even on race day where you're pushing yourself to your limits, right? And you're pushing through the fatigue and the discomfort. And that's essential to be able to do so. But building that mental resilience is key because there's, like I mentioned, going to be times where you just don't feel like getting out of bed, especially on these training days and going to do these long, like three hour sessions, if you have it, or on a Saturday going and doing a five hour bike ride. However, you have to put the time in and each of the disciplines of triathlon in order to make sure you feel your best on race day. The discipline you build though, by doing all these things, even when you don't feel like it, I promise you it will carry over into the rest of your life. So think about it in those moments when you don't feel like doing that workout, just realize like, hey, you know, I don't feel like doing this bike ride workout right now, but I'm going to go do it anyways, because I know that it's going to carry over into other things. Like maybe when I'm at work and I don't feel like doing something with work, I'm just going to do it anyways. And you're building that mental muscle to slowly just constantly do things you don't want to do. And you know what they say? They say that successful people do things they don't want to do when they don't want to do them. So that carries over into being a triathlete as well. Successful athletes and the ones that perform well on race day are the ones that throughout training, they did the sessions even when they didn't want to do them. So that's another thing to really keep in mind and just be prepared for that there are going to be days when you just do not want to do the workouts, but that's when it's the most important to do them anyways. The third thing to really keep in mind is the 80-20 rule. Now the 80-20 rule states that 80% of your training should be at about zone two training, which if you're new to zone two training, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that discuss it. The point of zone two training is just to build your aerobic base. You're not pushing too crazy crazy hard. And then, so that's 80% of training. And then the 20% of training is when you have your hard sessions, maybe your speed workouts, your big gear sessions on the bike. There's certain sessions where you do want to push really hard. And I will admit at the very beginning of my training, I was really pushing pretty hard on just about every workout. And what you realize pretty quickly is that that is how you burn out. And that is how you cause injury. And that is how you just simply give up on training because your body just cannot go anymore. Because if you think about 
about it, if you're constantly pushing hard every single workout, how are you gonna show up the next day to that training session and have a successful training session, a very productive training session? The simple truth is that you're not because your body is exhausted from the day before. However, if a majority of your workouts aren't pushing yourself too crazy hard and they're focused on building that aerobic base, then you're gonna be able to show up to the workout the next day and perform in a state in which you are improving on a daily basis. So that's something really important to keep in mind. I know it's easy to get excited at the beginning of a, a training block and really want to push hard just so, so you can see results quicker, but that's a really easy way to burn out quickly and then not see any results at all. Okay, so for number four, it is really just the importance of having a good training plan in place. Now imagine you wake up, you have a training day, and you think to yourself, well, what the hell am I gonna do today? What is, gonna, what is my training session gonna be? I promise you, if you live and do your training for an Ironman that way, you're not gonna succeed. It's just a simple fact because it's very easy to make excuses as to not knowing what to do that day and not really focusing on what needs to get done in order for you to progress in certain areas that you need to continue to progress in. So making sure that you have a strong training plan in place is one of the most crucial parts of all of this to begin with. So make sure you find a good training plan that you can easily follow uh, and make sure it's easily adjustable because as we all know, life happens and life can kind of throw things at us that we're not expecting. And with that being said, you need to be able to adjust your training schedule based on kind of what's going on at the time. If it's a training schedule where it's not flexible, then you're gonna struggle kind of keeping up with it, especially when things do come at you. So make sure you find something that's easy to move around based on your schedule and your needs. When I was training for the Ironman, I used an app called Training Peaks, which I highly recommend. And I synced it with a training program through my pro coach, which I will put those links to those two in the description below so you can go check them out i'm not like an affiliate or anything like that but i highly recommend those programs because they were extremely easy for me to follow you know they customized it based on where your training heart rate was at and you take training fitness tests throughout that can slowly adjust to help you whether you need to increase your training volume or decrease it. There's a lot of different things that really help you and make sure you're staying on the right track and also making sure that you're staying healthy uh, and not causing any injuries around, along the way. So I highly recommend checking them out. Again, the links will be in the description for you to check out. Okay, so for number five, it's really the importance of having a strong nutrition plan in place, but practicing it throughout the duration of training. You know, they usually talk about the three disciplines of Ironman, which is swimming, cycling, and running. However, there is a fourth discipline and it's called nutrition. It is key, honestly, to all of Ironman training. If you do not have nutrition in place and having a strong nutrition plan in place, that's an easy way to set yourself up for failure. And what you wanna do is, like I mentioned, practice it throughout all of training. The last thing that you wanna do is wait until one or two months before the race to start practicing what your nutrition will be because it's not really giving your body enough time to adapt and realize what works and what doesn't work. So what I would suggest is from the very beginning of starting to train for an Ironman, make sure that on every long run, on every long bike ride on the weekends, on every brick workout that you have, that you are practicing using the nutrition and timing out uh, the nutrition that you will use for each one of those practice sessions, because that's when you're gonna learn how your body is going to adapt to certain nutrition, what's gonna work well, what's not gonna work well, and that's really your trial and error. You're able to do trial and error. The last thing you wanna do is have trial and error on race day, and then you bonk and you're not able to finish the race because you didn't prepare properly for the nutrition. So for number six, it's really about the importance of building leg strength. And I will say, I didn't really think about this a ton before training for my first full Ironman, but I realized it quickly throughout training that I really needed to focus on building my leg strength because what was happening was, was I was building an aerobic base and I was doing great and was able to run for a long time and wasn't feeling tired or exhausted mentally or from breathing or anything like that. But what I was feeling was my legs getting extremely tired and they would just start getting really heavy, especially after you're spending a lot of time on the bike and then having to go out on a run. So what I realized is I really need to start spending some more time in the gym to make sure I am building leg strength because I'll be honest, I do not have huge, strong legs like a lot of athletes out there and I'm gonna blame it on genetics, but the truth is, is I don't have that. So what I needed to do was make sure that I was still getting squats in, I was still lifting weights because I wanted my legs to be as strong as possible because you're gonna be spending a ton of time on them 
come race day and the last thing you want is for your legs to like lock up and just not be able to carry on because they just don't have the strength in order to do so. So make sure you're still doing heavy leg workouts, make sure you're doing some big gear workouts on the bike and just getting your body and your legs used to doing um, heavy lifting because it's gonna be a long day on those bad boys and you wanna make sure that they are as strong as possible. Now the seventh thing that I wish I knew, which I feel like deep down I knew about, but I kind of just turned a blind eye to it, which you might do as well, but just realizing how expensive this sport can get and it can get expensive very quick if you let it. And it's one of those things where you have to keep in mind that you do not need everything at one time. All you really need to get started with training is obviously a bike, you need a helmet and cycling shoes, but most likely you already have something to swim in. And there's a good chance that most of you who are doing Iron Ironman training have been running. You have a history of running, so you probably already have running shoes. But where things can start getting extremely expensive is when you're getting all these bike add-ons, when it comes to like getting all this different nutrition, when it comes to getting all the add-ons for swimming, your swimsuit, um, not your swimsuit, your wetsuit, anything else that goes with swimming. You can get very expensive goggles if you wanted to. Running can start getting expensive if you start getting a lot of different kind of gear. So just start with the basics and don't let it overwhelm you because I definitely let it overwhelm me at first. And I will say I spent a little more than I probably should have up front when I didn't need everything up front. First off, you need to figure out if Ironman is something that you really wanna do long-term because if it's not, there's no point in going out and buying a $10,000 bike if you're just gonna do one race and then maybe never do one it again. So I would start with getting like a beginner bike and then going from there. And if it's something that after your first race, you're like, wow, I love this sport, I am hooked then maybe see about upgrading after that, but don't start with the most expensive thing. Just take your time and slowly gather those things over time. Okay, so on to number eight, and since we are speaking of the bike, let's kind of carry that over to this one, which is making sure you get a really good bike fit as soon as you do get your bike. And if you are planning on riding an aero, which means using aero bars, then make sure you get those on as soon as possible, because what you're gonna wanna do throughout training is making sure that you're riding in the correct position. And if you're using aero bars, you want to make sure you're going to be training in those aero bars because on race day, you're going to spend hours and hours on end in that position. And you want to make sure that your body is getting used to riding in that position for X amount of hours, because come race day, if you haven't trained in that position that you're going to be riding in, there's a good chance you could injure yourself. You're going to have a lot of pain in different areas of the body because your body's not used to being like that. For instance, for my first half Ironman, I ended up riding in my drop bars for most of the race but the issue was that i did not train like that really whatsoever but on race day i got excited and i just kind of went for it just to make myself a little bit more aero and i paid for it when i got off the bike my lower back was cramping like crazy but it was because my lower back and my body wasn't used to being like that throughout the race so for my first full iron man I got aero bars on my bike and most of my training, I trained with them on. And then come race day, you know, I spent a lot of time in aero and I spent a lot of time resting on those aero bars, which is one reason I highly recommend getting them. And I didn't have any issues coming off the bike and I wasn't cramping whatsoever because I had trained that way through months and months of training. So highly recommend making sure you get a good bike fit. And if you are planning on riding an aero, getting those bars on as soon as possible in training so your body is used to riding in that position so you have no issues on race day. So my ninth tip, especially for people who aren't strong at this, is making sure you are spending as much time as possible in the pool and you are hitting all of your swimming workouts. For me, swimming was my weakest of the three disciplines of triathlon. And I will be honest, I was a little worried at times about the swim for the race because I've just never been a natural swimmer, I guess you could say. And for a lot of people, it is that way, unless they were professional swimmers in high school and they competed in high school or in college, you know, swimming is just tough at times, especially when it comes to the breathing and learning to control your breath while you are swimming. Because when you think about it, when you are running or when you're cycling, you're breathing like you normally would on a day-to-day -day basis. However, when you are swimming, you're breathing in your mouth and out your nose, which is kind of like the opposite, I feel like, based on how you're usually breathing on whether you're running or cycling or even just walking or breathing in general. So it's 
important to make sure you are spending as much time in the pool breathing and getting used to feeling what it's like when you're under pressure and honestly like like i mentioned the swim is a weak point for me and just making sure that i spent the time in the pool whether i wanted to or not is something where i saw a lot of a improvement because i did put in the hours that i was supposed to however i didn't put in the hours that i was supposed to for my first half iron man and i paid for it i struggled a lot on the swim and i was super nervous going into it however leading into lake placid you know i had spent hours and hours and hours in the pool and i made sure i rarely missed a swimming workout and i felt so much more confident going into that race and the swim although i was a little nervous about it at first for lake placid it ended up being my favorite part of the whole race so don't let the swimming part freak you out it freaked me out most of training for some reason i think it's just because i'm not a natural swimmer and i don't have the best technique however just spending the time in the pool that was needed gave me the confidence I needed in order to perform well on race day and at least be comfortable and enjoy it. And number 10, last but not least, just enjoy the journey of training and enjoy race day. Keep in mind that you are doing something that only like 1% of people in the world are willing to do or even try. And it is an amazing accomplishment. And just be proud of yourself. I mean, training for something like this is one of the hardest things to do. The time commitment, the physical and mental strength that you have to have, even just to get through training is something that you should be extremely proud of. So just take it in, enjoy it, and be proud of the moment. You know, throughout training, there are gonna be many, many ups and downs. But one quote that really helped me get through a lot of training was that it's not about the race itself. It's not about doing the race. What it's about is who you become along the way leading up to getting to the starting line. That is the the biggest thing when it comes to doing an Ironman, and that is the part that is going to change your life if you let it. On race day, I tried not to put any pressure on myself and just take it in and enjoy the moment. I had my family there. My dog Lucky was there, which if you guys watched my journey of training for one of these, you saw him grow up a, lot, a little bit, and he's actually about to turn one next week, which is crazy. But just take it all in, enjoy the moment. It is something to really just take in and now looking back like it was one of the longest but greatest days of my life and I'm already like itching to do my next one which I don't know when it will be since my training and since the race I got engaged so my fiance and I now Barry um, you know we have a wedding to plan so she'd probably kill me if I signed up for another Ironman between now and the wedding but I'm gonna do some other races we just got to figure out which one they are because again like I mentioned it was one of my favorite and best days of my life and I want to relive that again and so just make sure you take it in don't put any pressure on yourself take in the moment because it goes by just like that and you want to make sure that you cherish that moment and then if if you love it enough, you can sign up for another one to do it all over again. So if you're thinking about signing up to do your first race, just do it. I promise you won't regret it. Uh, the amount of discipline that you will get from it, I promise will carry over into other aspects of life if you let it. And I promise you that just watch because it definitely did for me. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. I had a handful of people reach out to me after the race, like mentioning that they were going to be doing their first Ironman and asked if I had any tips for them. So I figured I'd make this video just to kind of help out for other people who may be wondering the same thing. And also, by the way, for any of you guys that have followed me along my journey, I just want to say thank you for supporting me. It meant a lot. I met a ton of you guys at Lake Placid on race day and the days leading up to the race. And it was just so cool knowing that you guys were supporting me. It really meant a lot. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm sure another video will be coming out soon around what race I'm gonna do next. I'm in talks with some of my friends about what that's gonna be. And trust me, this channel isn't going anywhere. I'm gonna be making a lot more videos. I just have to figure out what that next race is. So in the meantime, if you guys are training for an Ironman, keep kicking ass, you're doing great, you're doing something amazing, and I will see you guys in the next one.